Hey Run Junkies, welcome back to Runners Without Limits TV. A while back I reviewed the book Run Less, Run Faster and its methodology, but as I mentioned back then, I hadn't actually tried this philosophy with my own running. But now I have. Today in another episode of I Tried, I'm going to tell you how it went. Before I do that though, a quick shout out to my wonderful friends on Patreon. I'd like to thank the following amazing people for supporting Runners Without Limits on Patreon. Linda and Dan, Caitlin D, Kate O, Adam H, Kim G, Christine, Sally, Heather D, Joanna W, Christina G, Catherine B, Lindsay M, Jenny R, Matt K, Megan T, Jillian H, Kelly H, and Jeff J. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. You can check out my full explanation of the Run Less, Run Faster method here or on my blog, link in the description. In a nutshell, you run three days a week. Each run is race-specific training. You have one track day, one tempo run day, and one long run. On top of that, you have two cross-training days that may include swimming, cycling, rowing, or other cardio activity. The strength training is limited to two to three days a week, 20 to 30 minutes per session, and is primarily specific body weight work with runner specific strength. A lot of emphasis on the leg work. I followed the plan as close to the letter as I could for two full weeks. My original plan went like this. Monday, I did strength. Tuesday, run one, which is track work. Wednesday was cross training on the bike and strength. Thursday was run two, that's the tempo run. Friday was bike and strength again. Saturday, long run, Sunday, rest day. Now, the only deviation from the original plan was a one mile walk on every one of my non-running days as I was also participating in an activity street. For my weekend update vlogs and how I modified the original plan for each of those two weeks, check out the links in the description. I decided to go with the 10K training plan because the mileage volume is similar to where I was at the time right after I did a 10K race effort and it would serve as a springboard for upcoming events. Now here's how I determined the paces, the charts. This book has a lot of charts, charts that refer to other charts and then so on and so forth. So the short story here is that I took my most recent 10K from September 6th, that race time converted it to the target 5K time that then determines all of the training paces. Those training paces are based off of a 30 minute and 50 second 5k time. These are all of the paces prescribed, but for these two weeks, I used the 400, 800, short tempo and long tempo paces. The most important thing to me was to see how my runs actually felt when following this method. Run one, the track workouts each week, the first workout, first run each week, those felt great. I enjoyed the challenge of these really short, intense sets, and I nailed the paces for both of the track workouts. Run two tempo runs were much, much faster than I could sustain. In fact, it was 20 seconds faster per mile than my recent 10K race, which had only happened a couple weeks before. Long runs, I had the same issue. The prescribed paces were much faster by at least 20 seconds per mile faster than I could sustain throughout the planned run. What I determined was that after the first week, this plan is very lower body intensive. I chose to stick with cross training on the bike, while, but while those workouts were short, 20 to 35 minutes tops, they still had tempo work, so it wasn't just an easy spin. Lastly, the strength work was 75% leg work, squats, lunges, leg press, glute bridge, all of these are great. It's great runner strength training, but those hard runs, the tempo bike and the heavy leg strength, all of that work fried my legs by the time I got to the long run on the weekend. So in the second week, I made modifications by dropping the bike in favor of other cardio, as well as dropping the strength. But by the time I got to the last run of these two weeks, I was actually getting a little bit worried because all of the niggling issues that I have dealt with over the last five years all flooded back again. Did I nail it? No, not even close. I could only match the paces on two of the six planned runs. While I loved the track workouts, like I said, all the runs were frustratingly hard because I couldn't hit paces and I was very sore post run. As a result, I was quickly starting to dread my runs. 
Now, if you've been around a while, you know how profound a statement that is. Would I continue with this method? Absolutely not. In fact, after the first week, I almost bailed on the plan entirely. I reluctantly gave it a second shot once I made some alterations to the original plan, but I couldn't wait for that second week to be over. The big question is, did I change my mind about this philosophy? My original recommendation, please check out the link above, would be that this is not the philosophy for someone coming back from injury or hiatus or for novice runners, which is interesting because this is actually contrary to what I'm hearing from other sources about this method, that it is recommended for novices, for new runners. However, I actually stand by my original statement and even more so now. I have the experience and coaching knowledge to know how to adapt a training plan and how to adapt the runs within it as you go to meet where I am. Novice runners generally don't know how to do this safely. And I could imagine what a new runner might feel if these paces were too hard, if you couldn't get them done. It would be disconcerting, frustrating, and possibly lead to overtraining or injury if pushing too hard. As I said in my previous video, an intermediate runner with some race experience might find some use out of this. But again, as long as that runner understands how to modify the plan to meet them where they are. For those wanting to Boston qualify or have some aggressive time goal, I would say this. If you are close to those qualification times, this method probably would help you. If you have to drop a lot of time though, I would give yourself more time for training and a couple of training cycles to get you where you want to go. As I said in my previous video, this book itself is still worth a read. It can have a lot of great and helpful information for general running knowledge. It's the training method that might take some careful consideration. The bottom line is this, each individual workout is great. It offers a variety of runs to mix things up from intervals to tempos to long runs. And the strength training workout is fantastic. I would actually recommend and use this strength routine in my runner strength library. The cycling workouts are fine for cross training. However, when you take all of that and stack it upon one another, you end up with a lot of leg work at moderate to high intensity in a short period of time without adequate recovery. The runs are a great framework, but the algorithm used to determine your paces may or may not work for you. In my case, they were extremely aggressive paces. And I know for a fact that if I continued with this method, I would get sidelined with injury. So for novice runners, my concern would be that if you cannot hit these paces, you might be working too hard and get injured or become discouraged and disillusioned with running altogether. That is the last thing I want. Now I'm sure this method works for some, and that is great. I know of several people that have tried it and it works. If it does keep doing what you're doing, because when you find what works, stick with it. However, this training philosophy is one that could use a lot more coach and or community support. In fact, I actually tried to find online groups and forums to help me with my training and ask questions and get answers. And I found nothing with this method. Online forums are great for guiding runners of all levels, but without support, encouragement, and feedback, taking this training method on by yourself, just by reading the book, could be frustrating and discouraging. Maybe perhaps not a glowing review, and I'm sure I'm gonna get some haters on this, but my whole philosophy is to help create an enjoyment in running, encourage runners of all levels, and help runners reduce their risk of injury. So I'd love to hear from you. And like I said, I'm sure I'll get some haters here, but please leave thoughts, questions, comments, and suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. And remember you can support this channel by leaving a like or financially over on our Patreon page. That is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, remember you have no limits and happy running.